All right, we're live. Welcome, everybody. Good to see you here. We are here to talk to our friends, Matt and Leslie Rostowski. They just got married about three weeks ago, and we wanted to check in with them and hear their success story. So welcome, Matt and Leslie. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Good to have you here, guys, and so awesome to see you both and now married in your new home. And um, we wanted to hear your story, how it all started and where you at now. So share with us how it all began. Sure. Do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Um, yeah, maybe you should go first since it all started. This is like, yeah. We'll start with your journey. <laughs> yeah, my perspective and then maybe your perspective. Yeah, sure. Um, so about a year ago, I was single. Um, before that, I knew that I wanted to get married. Um, I did kind of sometimes wrestle with the idea of like, oh, do I want this or not? I always knew for sure that I wanted to have kids, for sure wanted a family. Got to the place where I was like, okay, I definitely want to get married. Definitely want to have a husband. Uh, now what? What, what's going on here? <laughs> um, had dated a lot of people, would get into relationships and then find out later there was a lot of tension because there was just conflict, like just some conflict there because we were just didn't see eye to eye on stuff. And then it was like, you know, we'd already gotten so far into the relationship that it was like, OK, do we keep going and try to make it work or do we like try to just end it? But we've already invested all this time and emotional energy. So that's where I was. And um, I uh, got to the place where I was like, so uh, wanting to go from A to B, like I was um, telling Matt and thought about this the other day too, that like, you know, I was single and, Point B was to be married, but there was like no, it was like I was at the Grand Canyon and there was this big mountain, this giant valley underneath and there was no bridge. There was no um, getting across for me. And it was, it, what was even more frustrating is that I knew I wanted to get to point B, but I would see all these other people get across and get to point B. And I was like, well, how, why, why didn't you tell me? And people would just tell me stuff like, oh, just wait on God's timing or um, just keep praying. And I had been doing that for 10 years. And that was like so salt on the wound because I was like, "Does do you think that that means that I am not doing that? So that was frustrating. Um, but then I got connected with Jesse and Arena and Carlos and Chantel and learn some strategies. And then within a year, here we are married. And um, we actually ended up meeting uh, through an app called Meetup. We did meet in person. And um, I just realized, and we both realized that our, our vision and our mission for life is so, so matched up well, that it was just, um, would be a foolish decision to to say no and, and not take this opportunity and just go ahead and commit and and let's do it let's build our mission and our vision and our lives together so cool yeah. love it what about Matt yeah um yeah so um just like Leslie I kept choosing um you know the wrong people for me and um I had just gotten out of a relationship two years before I met Leslie and I was, um, you know, on the dating apps and stuff and, um, you know, not having a lot of success there. And, uh, so I, I finally started going to more in-person stuff like, you know, the meetup groups that are here local to our city, Louisville, and then, um, just started making friends and, you know, and then, uh, and then one day I, Leslie showed up, um, she showed up at the, uh, Malibu Jacks in, in Louisville. It's like a, a fun center with go-karts and laser tag and stuff. 
And um, yeah, she um, she said hi to me, and I um, yeah, I definitely knew there was something special about Leslie. Didn't know what it was yet. I knew I was attracted to Leslie, but uh, yeah, I just I found myself really curious about her and wanting to know more about her, and so um, that's why I uh, pursued her. And, um, you know, I continue to pursue her and, um, you know, up until, you know, I eventually proposed to her um, and I proposed to her actually, you know, pretty quickly considering, you know, the other relationships I was in before meeting her. And um, lucky for me, she said yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, here we are. <laughs> so. That's wonderful. So what tools or skills uh, did you use that brought you unity and deep connection in that process? Yeah, I think for me, um, being connected with um, you guys and, you know, Carlos and Chantel really helped me to figure out like, okay, what is my mission on earth here? Because I feel like um, a lot of times we just go through life, we based on other people's expectations of us or based on what society says is like normal or the path you should take. But, you know, I really started asking myself questions of like, what do I want? What do I want my life to look like? And really give, you know, giving myself the freedom to really dream and um, having just a really clear mission for my life and a really clear vision helped me to be able to fine tune who would be the best fit. Um, because previously I would probably just, um, uh, oh, they're a Christian. So like, let's make it work. Well, I quickly realized that not every Christian should be, you know, like just because you're a Christian and you're a Christian doesn't mean that you're a great fit or your missions are aligned or even, you know, maybe your values are not aligned. So I learned that it's more than just having the same shared faith. Um, and the more specifically that you can get with that, the more specific that I think God can help you find someone. So that was the biggest tool for me. What were some of the daily things that you did cyclically that enhanced the, the budding, and growing connection between you two. Mm -hmm, the foundation, huh? Yeah. Foundational daily cycles. Yeah, so um, Leslie helped uh, both of us implement things she was learning from the course. And she introduced us to, you know, the system, the sanctuary, peculiar sanctuary system. And uh, it was a huge help just continuing to like keep that uh you know keep that connection fresh and keep growing it so yeah wow i love it that's so good love yeah that. and he was talking about um like the sanctuary practices and um which is basically about connection with god and connection with yourself and connection with someone else and um I think it's been really beneficial and really helpful for us and was helpful for us and um, just getting to know each other. Yeah. Is that something that you still continue doing in your marriage? Yes, we are not as consistent as we would like to be, but we did get to do it this morning. And I just remember like speaking those words of life because it's all about encouragement and speaking life. And um, I just saw Matt's face this morning just light up and he was just like, oh, <laughs> and so it's like kind of like um, maybe exercising or cooking healthy. You know, it, it can take a while to kind of get into that habit, but the benefits are very, very fruitful. And we're just kind of still getting into that consistent routine. So we're not perfect at it yet. Um but we are definitely just trying to get a morning routine started with something beneficial. And we are definitely using the sanctuary practices for that. Lovely. Yeah. It, it seems that you're thoroughly grasping the concept of you'll get further 
with consistent small baby steps mm -hmm. versus occasional giant steps and massive action on an occasional basis. Mm -hmm. I love it. That's beautiful. And my, our next question is, uh, what triggers did you need to overcome to move forward towards marriage? Oh, wow. Yes. Um, I think the big thing for me was some agreements with maybe some family members um, for myself, uh, which basically I used to agree certain what I used to believe certain lies about this person or about myself. Um, I used to believe lies about gender roles and all this kind of stuff. Sorry, I'm sliding off a little bit. Um, oh. I wonder if we can scoot our chair a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, I gotcha. Sorry. Um, are you comfy? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> this is real life. Okay. There we go. Um, yes, I did have some, uh, I guess you could say, triggers regarding certain family members. And um, I also used to just kind of not believe that I was worthy or deserved a great marriage. And I realized that I do des you know, I do um, deserve that and am worthy of that. And that, you know, my past does not define me. Past choices don't define me. Past relationships don't define me. So those are the huge things I had to overcome to receive men into my life. Right. Yeah. And I'd say there were similar triggers for me of, yeah, just, um, you know, not believing yeah, I was worthy of, you know, a wife that was right for me and uh, things like that. So, yeah, definitely going through the material and the system helped, um, you know, change those those beliefs. So good. So you know, good. I remember just driving with you in the car three weeks ago, right before you guys got married, and just it just seeing how you are connecting, how many things you have in common. And Jesse and I were talking, we're like, this is so awesome. Look at that. They have this in common, that in common. They just connect through music and you know, music festivals and food <laughs> and activities, and it's you know, it's truly a beautiful thing to find your match that becomes your best friend because it becomes your spouse, becomes your partner in life. And that's beautiful. Yeah, that similar alignment in your missions and your life vision, uh -huh. similar, not exactly the same, but similar, is the true heart definition of equally you. And it is yeah picture of two oxen with under the same yoke walking in the same direction pulling the same load yeah. that's equally yoke so our mm -hmm. final question for you is what helps you stay in peace and unity now since being married for three weeks three weeks yeah <laughs> we know it's fresh Wait, but it's, it's still relevant weeks, you guys is it four weeks right oh, yeah it's has it been? No, it's three weeks. No. Three weeks. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so we recognize that yes, you've only been married uh, a month or less, but still the tools that you're applying will definitely enhance even somebody who has been married for 50 years. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, what helps you stay in peace and unity now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wanna go or should I go? You can go first if you have something. <laughs> You want to share? Uh, yeah, just like you said, embracing the the yoke, just yoking and um, just going all in. And we're we're doing our morning routines together now, which is great. And we're just learning how to work as a team, um, you know, for the for the future of you know our family and. Um, and yeah, just speaking life into each other yeah. at all times, um, always building each other up and um, and serving each other. Yeah. That's so good. I love it. You're basically, yeah. you're, not, you're not making any assumptions 
and having you, expectations and you're seeking to uh, stay free from expectations yeah 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 and i think being part of the monday night coaching calls too um helping me i need to change like not expecting him to change but i need to change and i need to look at myself and i need to take a self responsibility and i need to change expectations and change my communication style and i'm in charge of me and i'm the only person i can you know change and so that's been really helpful and to shift mindsets shift the expectations and being more fluid like a river rather than stuck like a rock and being that way being fluid like a river and being willing to grow being willing to change i have actually learned so much from being married to matt in the three weeks you know that we've been together about just life like the way that his brain operates is so different than mine but i am like i can't even begin to explain how much i have learned from him just by communicating and and letting go of expectations and changing my own focusing on myself and what i can do better that is so good so basically what you're doing both of you individually are creating an atmosphere and an environment for the other to thrive and flourish mm -hmm. and be their best that's right you're not, you're not assuming you're not playing the blame game you take responsibility for yourselves yeah. and in doing so you create an environment and an atmosphere for the other to feel safe to open up and to be free to be them mistakes and all knowing that nothing is going to rip you apart as long as you keep in mind that you both have a role to play they bring together under that yoke mm -hmm. and that one flesh freedom is the result we love that yeah so good i would say too is that you know it's very cool to see that you see each other as not enemies but as friends as there to help each other's partners because you know a lot of times we see couples and they're enemies because they're like blaming each other why are you pushing my buttons you know but instead you look and be like whoa thank you so much for telling me that i did not see that before thank you for bringing solution into that right mm -hmm. and and having a different perspective on that and it's it's awesome i love that being grateful for triggers, seeing them as an opportunity to grow and level up yeah. and receive healing in a certain area of your soul that only now has been revealed, even though it's been there all along. Mm -hmm. And yeah. embracing those as opportunity. That's lovely. Yeah. Yes. Right. Closing thoughts, you guys. Well, I think marriage is a beautiful, beautiful gift when it's obviously with the right person because it is um you know there's to me old wounds or old behaviors that i used to operate in years ago that i'm realizing are starting to wanting to resurface but now i have the tools like the a lot of the um codependent i guess you could say like taking on more responsibility than i need to and then becoming resentful but now i have the tools it's like, oh, here it comes again. I thought I dealt with that. Oh, here we go. No, we're going to deal with this differently. This is not how our marriage is going to be. We're not going to be resentful. We're not going to be bitter. Nope, we're not having that. And so that's my closing thoughts is that I think marriage is um, good when it's two people, but it's great when it's in community that's helping you grow, that's helping you maintain and helping you have the best marriage possible. Thank you so much for sharing. And our closing thought before we finish this live stream out is simply to all our viewers to remember that Irina and myself and the Rastaskis, Matt and Leslie, are seeking to walk out the picture of that which got us married will also keep us married. Mm -hmm. Staying plugged in to the process and the system that got us from point A to point B will also keep us in that one flesh, one flesh freedom, sanctuary, sanctuary 
equally yoked marriage with yeah. deep connection. And you can thus remain in the honeymoon stage. Our own mentors have been married over 11 years and they are still in the honeymoon stage because they create their marriage. So I encourage all of you viewers to consider how can you create, start creating your future yeah. with deep connections in all areas of your life, whether it's business connections, family connections, personal connections, spiritual connections, or intimate connections. Connection skills are just that. They're a skill. They're learned in the same way that you learn communication skills, leadership skills, or a job skill. They don't come naturally. We're not born with connection skills. Uh, and that's why singles often stay, um, stay, stay single is because they don't know what they don't know. And they assume uh, that this is their lot or they adopt Christianese terms to justify why they're still there and recognize, not recognizing that there are very intentional steps that are taken that are laws and principles in God's kingdom that take you from that point A to point B. So with that, thank you everyone for plugging in and listening into this wonderful story by the Rastaskis. Uh, we bless your, your day, whatever time of day you're watching this later on. And uh, we'll see you on the next live stream, broadcast, or interview. Yes, thank you, Matt and Leslie. Yes. So grateful for you guys. Yeah, thank you, Jesse and Arena. Bye, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye.